Earlier this year, we brought back a series called the Cheap Gun Challenge. In that challenge, I chose a car, CW40. Oh. <laughs> ah. Uh oh. I'm oh. Egyptian, yes. I might have to go to the hospital. God, I don't want to shoot this thing. Oh, oh my God. No, no. <laughs> Do you think that I use, because I used apple butter as lube, that's what's causing the problem? And you guys at home, let us know that was a poor choice. The answer is always PSA Dagger for the $300 The PSA category. Dagger on sale costs $250. Death should have went with the PSA Dagger. They're My under picks for the cheap gun challenge um, would be where is the dagger? together a Could PSA have got a PSA Dagger. dagger. Guys, they not they not a dagger. dagger so far, no In that video, there's an overwhelming amount of comments letting us know the Palmetto State Armory Dagger is the best cheap gun on the market. Today we're gonna to find out if you guys were right about the PSA dagger or if the car CW40 beats the shit out of it. Before we get further into the video, guys, we always like to give a relationship of how we're working with the manufacturer. Right. I wanted to make this as similar to the viewer's experience as possible. So I got on their website, I found the model I wanted, and I sent it to an FFL at my at my location. Boom. Right. So they didn't help us out at all with it. I just bought it flat out. We didn't ask. So. Just so yeah, everyone yeah. knows. Yeah. Hopefully work with them <laughs> with stuff on yeah. the future, but I just yeah, bought yeah. this flat out. And you know what this also requires? A really, really good belt. Yeah. What belt are you wearing, Jake? Um, Oh, thank God I have it on. Sometimes I was like, I was like, oh God, did I just get? Do you ever wear pants without a belt? It, only it, 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 like it, no, not really. What kind of fucking weirdo does sweatpants, that? Sweatpants, sweatpants, okay. Lululemon, you know, okay. shit like that. I'll um, give you that. Yeah, Tell some us about people the belt. Don't judge me, but, but whatever. Uh, this is a light inner Velcro belt. Uh, okay. You got a battle wagon on, but it's on top of my light inner Velcro yeah. as well. Um, and those sync up well. And you would maybe even be wondering, like, hey, with this buckle, how does that work? Just um, fine. Look it's at that. designed so that they can overlap just fine, and you just have fine. no no issues with that. Um, you've got their. Mag pouch, well, these are S-Tacs, but um, yep. they've got their new uh, sort of mag pouch, mag pouch, um, like mounting plate, if you will. Yep. I can't even remember quite what they're calling it. Really cool. I've been using the hell out of those. You're more of a battle, battle belt, belt guy. Uh, guy than me. And then uh, they got these cool new, like, panels you can put on like the back of your vehicle headrest. I've got one in my truck right there with a IFAC and a backup mag on it and stuff like that. Anyway, code is 1911 syndicate. You guys can plug that in. You get 10% off the entire store. Um, definitely check that out. They've been big supporters of the channel. So hell yeah. On with the show. Let's get into the features of this, Jake. Let's hit it. Basically, we're going to work top down. So we all know, you can tell, this is a Glock clone. Yes. Right? Is that hard to tell? Uh, the grip is a little different, okay. but otherwise, yeah, it looks like a Glock. We met each other at the height of the Gucci Glock craze. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, I was. I had nine Glocks at yeah. that time. Yeah. You had agents. I had agencies. You had salients. Salients, agencies. I had Zevs. Kind of stuff, yeah. Big thing back then is you'd get a stock Glock and send it out for some work. Right. Right. Let's take agency arms for example. Mm -hmm. You'd send them your slide, and they would do all the cuts and the milling and all that work, and that cost you seven to eight hundred dollars. For sure. You remember those days? Oh yeah. Right. And a complete build would cost you right around twenty five hundred. Twenty five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. This pistol here, with all the features we're about to get into, is right around $400, okay? Yeah, I mean. Working top down, we have slide cuts, lightning cuts. We have your optic cut. We have the rear sight moved to the front, which this is also, do you remember the heyday of that? Yeah, uh, well, I don't remember like where it came from, but I remember the, yeah. yeah, I definitely remember it. It was a big thing with Gucci locks where at first, like uh, Chris Costa with ATI and stuff like that, yeah. would put the rear sight forward. Okay. The idea being you would have to focus on just one thing instead of three. Okay. Right? It's neither really, here nor there. I don't, really I don't care, care one way or another. But okay. When I purchased this, I just wanted the model that spoke to me. And this is the SW2, which is a full-size frame and a compact slide. Yeah. But I got it with the threaded barrel, so that makes up with the barrel difference. Yeah, in case you need to do some quiet, spooky things. Yeah. That, but also, again, if we're talking about slide, we got to talk about the barrel. For the price point, I get a threaded barrel and a fully customized Glock. It's very hard to argue against it. Right? I, I mean, it really is. If the lightning cuts and all that whiz-bang kind of flashy cuts are not your thing, 
they have eight different slides to choose from. Yeah. Going from just a standard slide that has some cuts and some slide serrations all the way to what they call their extreme carry cuts, which they basically scallop out the front of the slide so it exposes a little bit more of the barrel. Yeah. And then it uh, they round out all the edges to make it less snag hazard-wise. Snaggy. Right. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. Second thing I'd like to highlight about this is it's compatible per their website with all Glock Gen 3 parts. You okay. got bugs in your beard there. Yeah, there I go. feel a little buggy yeah. out here today. Why is that? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm you sweet. Shower? I'm sweet and they want some of this. Okay. <laughs> per their website, it's all Gen 3 Glock parts. Yeah, I got so, you on that one. You did, yeah, yeah you got me on that. Got you a little yeah. bit good on job that. on that, yeah. yeah. Uh, it broke my train of thought. Okay, yeah. good. Um, that's important to me, I think, one, because the plethora of Glock Gen 3 parts that are out there. Plethora? Plethora? Plethora. Plethora? Yeah, it's plethora. This was decided in the previous episode where you said plethora. Like plethora? you're trying to say like clitora. I would it's never plethora. say that. plethora. That was definitely not correct. Anyway, plethora. Yeah, help yourself yeah. keep going. Dude, you're throwing me off with this. But <laughs> parts compatibility. So this will take any Gen 3 Glock parts, whether that's triggers, barrels, you name it. Yeah. So if there's not something you like on this gun, but you have a Gen 3 Glock equivalent part, yeah. you can switch it out if you already have it or if it's relatively cheap. Right on. Right? How's it going, Jake? PSA dagger time. PSA dagger, are you excited? I have always fantasized about this moment that I would shoot this gun. Let me know what you think about that high quality piece of machinery. First thing I notice, that sounds exactly like a 2011. <laughs> you that, don't have to be that rude. That sounds like a Cabot. For what this is, um, which is a Glock clone, yes. Look through it at that lens, Jake. Okay, uh, your dot's a tad loose. We've already identified that. So, right now when I pull the trigger, the the red dot has a little shift, but I think that's just because the dot's loose. I think it's your bad trigger press. Well, I don't spend a whole ton of time on. I mean, that's a nice trigger, isn't it? Almost feels custom. Had some custom work done to it. That's yeah. stock, though. I paid two grand just for the trigger. Okay. You see this bad boy. So, okay, so first observation. So it's not like a Gen 5 Glock. You got it. Right, because it's not uh, Ambi uh, slide release. So it'd be a Gen 3. 3, I guess? No, it's a 3. Yeah, I yep. guess 3 would be the closest. Yeah. Yep. Really tiny mag release. Interesting. Gen 3. Okay. Yep, Gen yeah. 3 mag release. Gosh, it just looks so tiny. Like, is this a mag release for ants, or am I am I right, or am I right here? They didn't go to the wider paddle till Gen 4, but this is built off all Gen 3. Did we get a bump? So, no. No, Glocks aren't manufactured that way. No, I'm just curious, you know, if I could engineer. I more said that because people in the comments will argue, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, let's see here. Well, your dot is certainly loose. Maybe you just missed. All right, got it. You don't want to shoot more through it? I think I understand what I'm dealing with. It's a even more budget Glock clone. Okay. Yeah. What about, you know, talk through the slide cuts with me? You like them? Sure. I mean. What about the frame? Don't really dig the frame that much. No? Tell me why. Um, I just got no texture here. Okay. Like Could I'm just use some more texture. texture. What about the angle? Um, I, I would also say it's almost weird. We've got like one finger groove. Uh huh. It's like, are we doing grooves or not doing grooves? Well, we just did one on this. Yeah, I'm saying go all in, go all out. But what if all you need is one? I prefer no grooves, period. Okay. Just because so, it's like my hands, your hands. Everyone's all, hands are different. All different things. Finn's paws, they're all different, right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, just let me determine where my hand goes would be my request. Um, I'm assuming you can't change out the back strap. It doesn't look nope. like it. Nope. Yeah. Which is, I don't get too worried about that. Some people are always like, it's so big for my hand. I'm like, I don't know, dude. I shoot a Mark 23 just fine and I'm not some huge dude. So okay. not really an issue for me. Uh, Does that feel like a standard Glock grip frame or slightly different with angle and grip, the palm swell? Angle. I'd say the angle is probably a little cleaner okay. for, for me not spending much time on Glocks anymore. I pick up the dot a little easier than I would in a normal, normal Glock for me being used to 1911s, I really have to like- Dip down? Exaggerate, you know, okay. this it's like, I'm doing that about half probably as much as I normally would. Um, I mean, I guess we'll probably wind up talking about how much these run, but I would certainly assume 
one of the things we'll wind up talking about is just like, hey, features per the money. And I, I'm gonna have to assume that's gonna be a big thing with this. You're on the right track. Um, it's like, hey, does this feel like an agency Glock or some $2,500? Absolutely not. Um, do you need it to be at 400 bucks? Probably not. So, Which we'll discuss a little bit later. Right, yeah. yeah. So I don't know, my, my assumption is it's probably gonna do everything you need it to do. Another thing that we gotta talk about as far as this is concerned, not only parts compatibility, but holsters. Right. Right, I have 20 different Glock 19 holsters, right? Because this is technically a Glock 19 slide, so it should fit in there. Sure. The only one it has fit in reliably and clicks in is my Tenacore Kurtum holster. Interesting. Okay. Other ones, it did not fit. Huh. Reason being is on their frame, there's a couple different features that we'll get into, but there's just some little extended swell points that are a little mm. bit fatter than a standard Glock. Okay. So it doesn't quite fit into that. Huh. But again, my Tenacore Kurtum is what I've been running on it. So there's not a direct cross compatibility with holsters. Parts wise, there is. The only difference, I guess, that we could bring up is like their trigger roll pins are different. Okay. They use actual roll pins. But other than that, everything is standard. Holsters are the one thing that people are gonna have a hard time kind of fine tuning. Yeah. You do If you do Google it, there's plenty of people making them for this specific model. Just out of curiosity, so. did you ever play around with like taking an actual Glock slide or frame and rotating it onto that? I didn't on purpose because I just wanted to focus specifically on the gun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was going to do that by switching out the trigger because we'll get into that in a bit, but I, I haven't switched any parts out. All right. So one of the biggest things we got to talk about is frame. Mm -hmm. One thing you noticed is that is a Gen 3 frame. So you're not getting ambi controls. Which as a ambi lefty shooter, I actually prefer on Glocks. Say that, explain that. Ambi lefty shooter. Well, lefty, a AKA I use the ambidextrous controls. Do you? Okay. Yeah. You don't use your trigger finger on that slide release? Here's the thing, on a Gen 5 that has ambidextrous controls on it, yeah. um, I wind up covering it up. So literally the one advantage I have on a Gen 3 Glock is everything always locks back and functions properly. Yeah. Because I'm not impeding anything over here. As mm -hmm. soon as they went to Gen 5, for me as a lefty, it was like, you were trying to do me a favor but you actually kind of screwed me over because now I'm impeding that that slide release, which is what you would often do as a right-handed yep. shooter. I'm like, damn, guys, give me a Gen 3. Gen 3 is what I want as a lefty. Okay. I don't want all the ambi shit. So you're saying you want that gun? Yeah. Okay, we well, can figure that I, out. I want a- It's okay, Jake. I, yeah. I want the We got it here on camera, guys. Set. Yeah. <laughs> Get more into the frame too. Um, it is a slightly different grip angle from a standard Glock. Right. Which you did notice. Yeah. This is always hard to put in words because people's hands are different. The way they present a pistol is different. My biggest thing is if you want to hold it up to the camera to show basically the palm swell area here is slightly different. There's more of a hump. Mm. Other than that, that's the biggest difference that I feel. Yeah. But you you notice an angle difference as far as where your the webbing of your hand it is. It feels closer to a 1911 than a standard factory Glock okay. does. Okay. Yeah, it's not a 1911 grip angle, but it is closer that direction than an OEM Glock. Okay. Yeah. You want more texture. I would argue most people are gonna say that texture is fine for a concealed carry gun, which is why I got that. I think it is completely adequate and is gonna be just fine. Okay. If I was taking my pick, would I do more? Sure. Is this a problem? No. And for, again, the price point, you're getting Somewhat more tech. Would you say more texture than a Glock, or about Not the same? Just different. I'd say it's. I'd say it's pretty compatible. Okay. Yeah. I'd say there's a little more texture and better grip angle and better palm swell. Sure. So again, for the price, being a Glock clone, you're getting a lot. So I think for me, looking at this, you go, look, it's really tough to argue with features per the money. I mean, that's kind of undeniable. Yeah. Um, so my biggest question would be, as a skeptical critic, at that price point, can this thing actually? work i would expect a glock clone to out of the box run fairly reliably having said that there are some things we're going to have to discuss about this gun i have my first two range trips about four to 450 rounds between those two range trips with zero malfunctions on the third range trip on both the stock mag that came with it, which is a Magpul mag, and a standard Glock 17 mag, on a full magazine, I'd insert the mag, drop the slide, and there would be a failure to feed. Why that would happen, have no clue, but it happened 
I'd say four to five times that range trip on a full mag, okay? After that, there was one more range trip where that happened twice throughout the entire range trip, which was about another 400 rounds. I cannot recreate it. I was hoping it would happen again on the range today, but we had another malfunction on the range today. On the malfunction we saw today, it was a failure to eject, and then it was a failure to feed because of the failure to eject. Yeah, it was almost like a hybrid stove pipe. It, it was like three stove pipe or? Yeah, it was a hybrid of a malfunction. I mean, the failure to eject was the culprit of the problem though. Correct. And we don't have audio for that guys, but we're gonna cut it in. And that's a one-off. You've only had that one. I've only had that happen today on the range. Which I wouldn't place too much faith in it if it's a one-off. Yeah. You know? Just kind of those weird, you know, maybe I was impeding the slide ever so slightly. Yeah. Lost my grip. I mean, I was talking about it when I was listening to you talk about the uh, failure to feed. I, I was talking about it on another video recently where I'm like, I don't worry about one-off malfunctions. I, I, I'm looking for patterns of malfunctions. Correct. So to me, the, the little bit of that pattern of the failure to feed is interesting though. Which again, even as you're talking, I haven't been able to have the failure to feed yeah. like I did those couple range trips. Interesting. It's worth noting because again, guys, we do these and try to give you the most honest feedback we can. Sure. And that's something worth noting. Yeah. Last thing we're gonna talk about, Jake, before we get into final thoughts and the rating and things of that sort is the trigger. Mm -hmm. Now, your biggest gripe with most Palmer guns is the trigger, right? I, I mean, I'm a 1911 guy, so it's like, it's, it's not even a fair fight. <laughs> you know? Sure. And I would say most people's gripe with Palmer striker fire guns is the trigger. However, good fundamentals and a lot of training, you can still shoot those triggers fairly well. 100%. Not arguing that, right? People no. that argue that, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is a standard as far as like the control, fire control mechanism in the back of the gun. Same as a Gen 3 trigger. Okay. The shoe is different though. Right, yeah. So typically on Glocks, you have in the middle of the trigger, the trigger safety. Yeah, yeah. Right? On pistols like the Smith & Wessons, it's the bottom half of the trigger pivots, and that's the safety, yeah. right? And that's the style that this is. So I'd say it's the Smith & Wesson trigger shoe with a Glock Gen 3 trigger system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't like those type of triggers. I don't like how they curve at the bottom. It's not, I'm not drawn to them. Yep, yeah. I'd rather have a standard Glock trigger safety, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. But again, for this price, the price that it comes at, all the features and the availability to change out any Glock Gen 3 trigger, yeah. you can just swap that out. Sure. And call it a day. Sure. Right? They maintain the trigger system with roll pins too, which is actually an upgrade compared to normal Glocks because they're just push pins. Yeah. So I'd say they actually have that up on Glock. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the trigger is nothing to write home about other than the trigger shoe is the only thing I'd change. So I guess maybe my ultimate question is we kind of look at the reliability side, like where are you at on the trust scale with that thing? So I, after those malfunctions that I had, those first two range trips, I was a little skeptical. That third range trip, I had no malfunctions, right? I've been carrying this in my tentacore holster. Like I, I trust my life to it okay. because rounds are already fed into the chamber and it never had an issue cycling a full mag. It just had an issue of, you know, cycling the first round on an empty chamber. Got it. Right? So like for the price and everything, I trust my life to this gun, man. Okay. It's all Glock Gen 3 parts. Okay. Before we get into the rest of the video, Couple ways people can support us, Jake. Yes. We got Patreon. We do a lot of cool free, not free, but some cool exclusive content, mm -hmm. right? Obviously you gotta pay for Patreon, but there's some exclusive behind the scenes content. Jake's been vlogging lately, which, how's that going? That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. been awake for a long time right now. That'll, I think You'll the see. other video's probably already out by now, but yeah. We host private classes with verified, you know, legitimate instructors across the country. We got one of those coming up in September. And it's just a way to support the machine, mm -hmm. right? On top of that, we are a real estate company. Jake's here in Utah. I'm down in Arizona. We have affiliates all across the country. If you need help with real estate, you're into guns and shooting, we can help you out. All right, Jake, some final thoughts about this. Hit me. So we had mentioned earlier in the video, we met at the height of the Gucci Glocks, right? I had a salient, a Zev, an agency, like a whole kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. Back then, that was the thing for those guns. You'd buy the gun, send it off, have a bunch of work done to it, get it back. It's like a $3,000 gun at the end of it. Yeah, totally. Right? You enjoyed those guns back then. I did, had a lot of them. Yeah. How come you enjoyed them? Um, Man, it's it's the shooting schools that I came up. Everyone was shooting Glocks and I liked nice shit. And so I just got the nice version of the thing everyone was shooting. Yep, yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of the way I went too. Yeah. At the end of the day, when we were spending $2,500 on those guns, for again, right around $400 shipped to your house or to your FFL, 
it is really hard to argue why anyone would go with a Glock at this point. And that comes with... You mean an OEM Glock? A, a Glock that's sent off to get work done. Oh, got it. Got like, it. why on earth would you ever take a stock Glock and send it out to get all that work done when you have the dagger? There's purists out there. Okay. It's like people who say, why would I get a HK SP5 when yeah. I can go get a, 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 a Zenith, Zenith or a TSOS that's yeah. $900? Yep. Go... Some of us are purists, man. Like the purist part of and it. And we just like the OEM shit. Which is an interesting idea for like a Palmer Tupperware gun, a purist for something like that. But there is an argument for that. Look, it, it, there's a counter argument too, okay? <laughs> You're going to take like words right out of my mouth. No, it? go ahead. No, 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 go, we, go. I think we're probably going different directions, which is I would argue that shops like PSA are giving you more value per feature for your money. I do not believe that a single shop will outmatch Glock in terms of trust and reliability. There you go, which is the argument to an OEM side, Correct. right? No one's ever gonna even meet Glock at that bar because it's so high at this point. Yeah. But again, if I can get a pistol from another shop, clone gun, that is reasonably, reasonably reliable, mm -hmm. which again, I haven't been able to figure out those malfunctions I've had. We've been very awesome about it. If they don't happen again, awesome. But for the price point, if you're not a purist and you want all the features of a cool looking gun, good frame, threaded barrel, optic cut Glock, that's Gen 3. Yeah. This is kind of yeah, kind of the only option. Yeah, if you have some budget considerations, I yep. mean, this is really tough to argue with. If you're like, I don't have budget considerations, it's like, okay, maybe you do go spend 500 bucks on a Glock and send it off. Like, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm always of the opinion of, do whatever you want, man. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> it's your money. Do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> if you want to spend 2,500 bucks on a Glock, knock yourself out. Yeah. Agreed. So, end rating for this. Originally, I was going to say it's got to be A+. Plus. Boy. Even, sorry, excuse me. Even when I first got the gun, I was immediately like, this is going to be an A+. Plus. Just on the fact, and maybe a little biased, that I'm a strike a fire Glock Palmer guy. Yeah. Having said that, after having the malfunctions and the issues that I had with it, Again, not repeatable, not consistent. There's not a true pattern there. I'm giving it an A minus. Wow, okay. For what it is and what the price is. Okay. It is really hard to not give that at least an A. Okay. Or, okay? Okay. What are you going to give that? I don't think I'm qualified to give it a, a, a grade yet. I You're don't not, think I, so have, I don't up. have the requisite time on it. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think it's a great gun for the price, good features, and uh, I'm happy I spent my own money on it. Right on. All right. Well, good for you. We'll see you guys next time.